ذكرنا بالحدث الأعظم واسمح لي أن أخذ قبسا من نور المبعوث الأكرم علمنا في الهجرة درسا يهدينا لطريق أقوم أقبل يا شهر محرم وابدأ من دار ابن الأرقم Our sisters, uh, once again, we are fortunate to be uh, alive and present in this special first month of our calendar, the month of Muharram. We've heard a lot with the 10 days, the 10, the Ashu day of Ashura passing about uh, Muharram. One of the key factors and reminders of these occasions and incidents is to make us ponder and think as to who we are, where we come from, and where do we obtain our guidance from. And as Muslims, we all know, and it is repeated right from our childhood days that we need to learn to recite the Quran, we need to learn to understand the Quran, we need to learn about the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu we need to know the kind of life he led, because the Quran itself tells us that his life is our Uswatun Hasana, is the ideal example for all mankind to follow. So what we have to do and what we don't have to do is very, very clearly spelled out. That's where Muslims are very fortunate along in, with, in particular, the followers of Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam, the Jews and the Christians, the Abrahamic faiths. Uh, for whatever it is, we do have a scripture to follow, the Holy Quran, of course, being the final one and the most authentic one. And the starting point has to be the Quran. And for whatever reasons we seem to be fond, which is a good thing, of reading the works of different scholars, we are fond of reading and listening to khutbahs and talks and bayans and uh, at different occasions, whether it's our two Eids, the Muharram, uh, the Ruha night, and all the other special occasions, we make a point of coming to listen and all that. But in that process, we have become a little uh, lethargic or a little slow in giving or maintaining the attention that needs to give, be given to the Quran. It doesn't mean that if you are listening to these lectures and uh, reading uh, different books and kitabs and so on, which we must do, but the link, direct link with the Quran has to be kept alive. Initially, Almighty has made it quite easy for us that if you only recite it, it has its huge spiritual benefits, just a recitation. But that must not end there. There must be a continuous effort to learn and understand uh, the real message of the Quran. So we could, if we don't know the language, we could do it via authentic, good translations. And the problem with translations is if you don't verify the quality of the translations, you can, it can be problematic. You just don't take any translation and anybody's translation uh, and think that you are reading the meaning of the Quran. It doesn't work like that. You have to know that it is a Quran, that different ulama, Different scholars uh, say, no, this translation is valid. Whether it's a Urdu translation, an English translation, Afrikaans translation, of course, a translation, a Zulu translation, whatever it might be. And one must be also be careful that if there's something uh, in the Quran, whether you understand Arabic and go directly to Arabic, never make the mistake of 
thinking that your individual understanding is the correct understanding. Because the correct understanding, even if you know Arabic thoroughly, translations are translations, you need to verify it, you need to ask for explanations. Sometimes the words used, even in the good translations, are not necessarily the correct word. Because Arabic is a, a super scientific language. And it only uses appropriate words for the appropriate meaning that needs to be, the appropriate message that has to be conveyed. So if anybody reads the Quran because he knows Arabic and thinks I have understood it, it's also another mistake. Because you need to really know the real Arabic language, the classical language of the time of revelation. Because with time, a lot of words, it's the same word that's used in the Quran, but the context in our time after 1500 years has changed. So the real meaning that the Quran is using for sometimes gets lost because the current colloquial meaning has other dimensions into it. So you have to check that too. And the means of doing it, our uh, uh, religious literature, our tafsir literature, our hadith literature, our fiqh literature is all available. You have to have knowledge of that as well. You can't just read the Quran out of the box without referring to all the other aspects where the explanation of the meanings of the verses is given through studying the sunnah, the hadiths, the tradition of the Prophet wasalam, through studying the interpretations of the different aima, Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Anifa, uh, Imam uh, Malik, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, and all the other scholars. We need to, to have that kind of understanding. So a Muslim is one who is, has to become scholarly. You have to find, you have to talk to our alim. You have to verify even the same things that I am saying. It is your duty to verify every talk that you listen to. It is your incumbent duty to check up everything. You cannot say, Mullah Adam said this in a Juma khutbah, so it has to be right. Who am I to be right? Or who is another sheikh to be right? You have to verify and check every bit of information. I can be a liar. I can be deceitful. So you have to double check. And I can be super honest, but can I just misunderstand something? So I'm not saying I have to be a liar and be deceived. I can just make an honest human mistake in misunderstanding a verse of the, uh, of the Quran. So you have to double check all the time. You are not going to stand on the day of judgment in front of Almighty Allah and say, when Mullah Adam said that, I'm not going to be there to defend for you because you have to find out yourself. You cannot say that what was said in the member is what I did. It should be like that, but you must have a little bit of usage of your common sense. That is it, can it be correct? That little bit of understanding when you recite the Kalima means you consciously uh, accept Islam and say, I am a Muslim, you must also have the ability to constantly verify, constantly check. That is what is expected. That is what the, uh, what the, uh, the Quran is. So we need to build a very strong, a very profound, a very critical, uh, observation based on reason. Nowhere are we recommended that if we say the Kalima and we become Muslims, we accept things without reason. Islam teaches us to be right on top of reason, but the reason means you have to have knowledge. You have to ask questions. You have to, not your own personal self, sit in a corner, read a translation, up in arms. No, we're doing this wrong and this wrong, and we must kill the non Muslims and we'll do that and make jihad. It doesn't work like that. It is about peace. Yeah. Islam is about peace. We say it. But do we display that peace? Just have a quick glance in your mind for, for a few seconds and look at who's killing. We are Muslims, so let's talk just about Muslims. Time is not there to uh, go into other communities. Who is killing the most Muslims today? You have the answer immediately. I don't have to put explanation. Even the custodians of the Haramain are involved. And it goes across the board. It's not just Arabs. So we mustn't make the mistake of putting the blame on the Arabs all the time. It doesn't work like that. 
Every one of us has some element of error or guilt or something that builds up into a national thing, a global phenomena. We mustn't think we are absolved. Our approach and our understanding must indicate, yes, we are living in the southern tip of Africa. We can only do this much. We can only give charity, maybe. That's all we can do. All that, I understand all that. But are you consciously involved as a member of the Muslim Ummah first? And are you equally consciously involved as a member of humanity? Muslims don't behave in isolation. We don't be, uh, work for the Muslim community only. We are custodians or we are, as the Quran says, we uh, show the shaheed. We are the evidence givers, the anbiya give evidence about us. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the qualified Rashidin. We are the evidence for mankind as a whole. You can't be a vicegerent, a Khalifa Almighty Allah, and you're only for Muslims. Never. You are responsible for mankind as a whole. You are responsible for every plant that grows. You are responsible for every uh, animal, every insect. We have that kind of responsibility towards everything. So super God conscious through understanding the Quran becomes absolutely critical. There can be no compromise. And it's not the common thing is, oh, we don't understand. There's no room for I don't understand if you're a Muslim. You'll have to make the time. You'll have to do, find ways of understanding. We are human beings. We have different levels. So a child's understanding will be different from an adolescent. The adolescent's understanding will be different from a, a middle-aged human being. The, the uh, older person's the, uh, understanding will be different. Experience comes in. Different relationships come to. So the understanding grows all the time. And that is the power of the Quran. It will satisfy the child, it will satisfy the adolescents, it will satisfy the middle-aged uh, human being, it will satisfy the old-aged person. All that is built in, it has that extreme inherent power in it. But we don't see that power. Unless, like you touch a live wire and it can kill you because that current goes through you. That's the bang you must get out of the understanding of the Quran. It must turn you upside down. Your soul must go almost within yourself, not physically. You must almost go berserk with that joy of understanding a word of the Quran, of understanding a verse of the Quran. It must create super joy in you. Then you are associated with the Quran. Then you have, are linked to the Quran. Keeping in mind that the Quran itself says that if every tree on earth is converted into pens. Every tree, not one tree, every tree on earth that exists, that existed in the past, that exists today, and will exist in the future, is converted into pens. And this is Quranic verse. And if the current ocean is used up as ink, and a second ocean, and seven oceans, an indefinite amount of oceans are turned into ink, not even 1% of Almighty's knowledge will be given to us. So what we have is that 1%, 2% of the kind of knowledge that exists in the domain of the Almighty. So when we think we are scholars and professors, and I'm an alim, and I'm this, and I'm hafiz, and I'm that, you're just delving in 1%. But that doesn't mean the other 99% must be forgotten. We continuously study, we continuously discover, and maybe up to the day of judgment, we may just go another one percent. But that's not the issue, because these kind of understandings will continue in the year after. Spiritual link with the Quran and with the Almighty will continue. The, the world will come to an end. All human beings and animals and plants will all disappear, uh, but the link to the Quran will remain. And the Quran will also remain, not just the link. The Quran is not a creation like you and I. It is an attribute of Allah. It is there forever. If Allah is forever, the Quran is forever. Attribute of Allah cannot be temporary. So we must understand, we've got a gift 
that is so full of knowledge and it has some, and everything that I'm saying about the 99% that we don't know, it is actually embedded in the Quran. It, we can start deriving. That's why if you read it more, even if you read a translation, a correct, good, authentic translation, you will get the same benefit, maybe at a lower level than somebody who knows Arabic, but you can, can try. Even cold subjects like mathematics and uh, physics emerges from the Quran. 124 sciences emerged. It's recorded in our literature. 124 circular sciences, subjects, emerge from the recitation of the Quran by an illiterate community. The Arabs who received the Quran were an illiterate nation. The Prophet وسلم, who received the Quran was an illiterate prophet. And there's a whole wisdom around why they were illiterate. Time is not there to explain that. You know, very briefly put, when you go to school in, in education, uh, philosophy, we talk of the child's brain is like a clean slate. We have to do the writing on that clean slate. So like that, we must understand that we're going to discover from the Quran all the time. It's not that we've read the Quran 6,000 plus verses and we've read it. No, no. Each time you read, you'll discover another one fact and another one fact and another one fact. Ask people who do that. You will discover, even if you read them all the time. So it's super powerful. The Quran is super powerful. And I'm not going to... Uh, talk too long, this was a busy week with Muharram and you were here for the 10th and all that. I'll give you an idea that if you really look at the uh, uh, Quran, then you will understand how you can discover things in the Quran. Before that, I'll just give three quotations to, to, give, uh, to, to give you an idea what the Quran is about. And uh, the, the, the initial uh, surah after uh, Surah Fatiha, Arif Lamim, that makes it very clear what the, the first few verses make it very clear. The first requirement is have no doubt of the Quran. La rayba fi. There must be no doubt at all that the Quran makes statements that was meant for 1500 years. Get that rubbish out of your mind. And I'm using the word rubbish intensely because the moment you think that way, it is rubbish. In fact, I should use more harsher words. The Quran is perfect. It has everything in it. Whether it's meant for 1,500 years ago, or 1,000 years ago, or 500 years ago, or today, or 1,000 years from today. It is relevant 100% from the moment it was revealed. It, it is not a historical book that ends at the time of Rasulullah, of the Khulafai Rashidin, and now we must do our own reasoning and make our own interpretation, then we've got it all wrong. The Quran doesn't allow us to think in that way. The Quran has given us everything. That's what he's saying in this uh, very short verse in Surah Zumar. That this Quran has examples and parables so that you can hear the zakkarun, you can be admonished, you can learn, you can remember Allah. The Quran is a book that gives you information that you understand Almighty Allah. You understand the role of the Anbiya. You understand the role of Oli Allah and pious people. You get this global understanding. That is what the Quran should be bringing in your heart. That understanding that here is a book, here is a message that is for all times and nothing, not a dot, leave alone a letter, not a dot is irrelevant. Everything in the Quran is absolutely re relevant and is not just while huma humanity is alive, it is in perpetuity, it will never end even in Akhir. And in Surah Nur, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ آيَاتٍ مُبَيِّنَاتٍ And the verse goes on, the Mubayinat means it is clear. The Quran is not mysterious. We must stop thinking, I can't understand the Qur'an. I need a Mawlana and a Shaykh. Yes, you take guidance from them, you ask their advice, uh, to, so that they can tell you, this is how you handle the Qur'an. This is how you start understanding the Qur'an. You, uh, if you're a Persian-speaking person, or if you're a Urdu-speaking person, the mistakes we make, those who speak Urdu, 
The Urdu words may be derived from Arabic, but many a times it's an Urdu word. It's a Hindi word. It is a Farsi, a Persian word. It's a Swahili word. It's a Bahasa Malaysian word. These languages that adopted 60, 70% of Arabic words into it, these are, uh, Urdu is created, it's, it's a Muslim language. Muslims created it. Bahasa is a Muslim language in Malaysia. They created it. The, the Swahili is, a, a, is 60, 70% Arabic. They created these languages for local people to understand. A lot of the people who made Dawa and went there, communication is critical. They can't go and talk in classical Quranic Arabic. So do you communicate with uh, a lot, especially Cape Town? It's all about Afrikaans. Afrikaans was written in Arabic script, not in Latin script. The first books of Afrikaans were written by Muslims with, dealing with our fiqh in Arabic script. So that is our other language. So the Quran, is ayatim mubayyinah, clear. The verses are clear for us to understand. We must make the effort. The moment we put that, and that's where la rayba the moment we say we can't, that's, that's doubt. The very first verse of Alif makes it very clear. You cannot have doubts. You can understand. You must understand. The Quran demands it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa demands it that we understand it. In Surah Yusuf it says, what of sila kulle shayin. It is, gives the explanation of everything. And we must firmly, no doubt, we must believe that everything is there. We need to find it. Something was said 1,500 years ago, but it'll happen in our age, and then we'll say, hey, but the Quran said this. It mentioned something. There was that the connection must be made. And it doesn't mean it was revealed for this age. It had a meaning 1,500 years, it had a meaning 200 years ago, it had a meaning 500, and it has a new, the meaning was there, a new understanding, because there's a new discovery, there's a new uh, explanation, and you see the link. So the same verse that gave us satisfaction to understand something 1,500 years ago will give us another understanding, but the verse hasn't changed, the meaning hasn't changed. That's why I said earlier that the Arabic language is super scientific. It has that ability. You take one root word, uh, uh, and that works, that's grammar, I won't go into it. You take one root word of three letters in Arabic, you've immediately learned 27, 28, and if you expand that, 30, 40 words. You immediately understand. When you uh, understand the meaning of one root word, you learn 28, 27 words immediately. That's how scientific it is. You take the camel, 100 to 200 words for camel. It has every meaning. The born camel, the first year camel, the second year camel, the brown camel, the white camel, everything. The two hump, there's words in Arabic. It's a profoundly scientific. We need to come to know those things. That's why I say you can't just take a, a, a one meaning and think, I know the Quran. You have to study, you have to know, you have to understand uh, all these things. You also have to remember that what, uh, what the Quran and this message and the, the, the Sunnah is telling us, that the driving force for the Ummah to be a powerful Ummah is nothing else but Dawah. That is the driving force, the petrol for this Ummah to be a dynamic Ummah. You can understand the Quran, you can sit at your home, it means nothing. That understanding won't carry you through uh, on the day of judgment. The spirituality of the Quran may take you through. Almighty wants to forgive us and be merciful. So you'll find many ways. But technically speaking, you can be a super mufassir and understand the Quran, but if you don't translate that into practicality, and I'm not talking of the five pillars in Psalm and Salah, that, there's no question of the, we don't even have to talk about it. You simply have to do those things. But if you don't add to that five pillars the aspect of conveying the message to Muslims that need to understand. To, so message to myself, message to my family, message to my uh, larger community, message to the Ummah, message to the larger humanity. Dawah is the driving force. That's the petrol of our machine of being a, a Muslim. Now, I'll give you one example to conclude. There are several explanations. One of the verses says, look at yourself. We won't go into that into today. But look at around you. What do you see? And look at connections. That's what the Quran's message. 
Look at connections. Now at random we find, mention, there's about six items here. Uh, I won't uh, read the verses related to it. The one verse talks of mountains were created so that the earth was the karra, it can be stable. But there's a hadith that tells us that one of the signs of the end of the earth, when everything is coming, the, one of the first signs is going to be, it's authentic hadith, the earth will be flattened. It'll still be a circle, but the smallest of hills, even if you have a little hump like that in your garden, it'll disappear. The whole earth will become absolutely flat. And the moment that happens, the word, word used in the Quran is istakarra, it creates stability, the stability will go, the instability. And that's when, when you read the other theses that the sun will rise in the, uh, in the west and all that, you can see that. And science has now verified that. We don't have to wait for science because the Quran, we believe it, we don't have doubt in the Quran. We don't need a scientist to tell us that the, the, the poles will be turned around, that South will become North Pole and North Pole will become South Pole. The Quran has indirectly indicated that's what's going to happen. And scientists say, uh, now we can expect that in the future to happen because the scientific science. So the first thing is mountain. And then the early human beings believed that it keeps the earth stable. The mountain is powerful. No, people worship mountains. Pagans worship mountains. Then Almighty said, the Sunnah tells us, if you're studying the verses and all that, the mountains are not the strongest. They look strong, but they're not the strongest. There's a little element. And the Quranic verse, when it talks of iron, it said, it uses the, uh, the, the verb nazalna. We sent iron to your earth. How we send it, we don't know, we need it. That's now a study. That's where the uh, understanding, that. when it says we sent iron, we should train our young children in our darlings, in our schools and everywhere. Come, let's understand this. How was the iron sent to earth? Was it a satellite? Was it a uh, asteroid? What was it? It's beautiful study because it's now going to reveal more information uh, about Almighty. So immediately it was said, no, no, don't think that iron is so strong. Because there's another element that is even stronger than iron. Now this all emerges if you have a relationship with the Quran and if you read the verses to get more understanding. And then we are told that fire is even stronger. What do you use to handle iron? No fire, iron is useless. You can't use that iron if you don't have fire. So what is stronger, the iron or the fire? Fire can melt iron, so fire is stronger. And then we realize by studying the Quran that no, 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 there's something else that is even stronger than fire. And that can put the fire off, it's water. Throw the water on that fire and it's going to uh, go. But then that doesn't end. There's something even stronger than uh, fire. And that is the wind. You know, now they talk of a cloud they can create by putting chemicals, sending aeroplanes and putting chemicals on the clouds and it'll rain. But they don't tell us and they almost use these kind of things that Allah is not in control. Allah is always in control. What they're not telling us is that they can throw those pellets of whatever chemicals or whatever they are on those clouds, but they cannot control the wind that can take that rain. It's meant for Cape Town, but it'll go and rain in Joburg. The wind is more powerful. It can do what it wants. And then the real crux of the thing is that what is the strongest? There's something even more strong. And if you understand and read the Quran and read the saints, uh, uh, the most powerful thing is the hand, the yad, the hand of the giver. Charity is the most powerful weapon for humanity. That is why when it talks of salah, it talks of uh, infarct. So spend is linked. Your iman is linked to spending, giving away, not keeping it in the bank. You can become ultra rich, you can become a billionaire, you can become a trillionaire, Islam doesn't stop you. But the approach is, my hands are in control of me. I give, I give. 
the yad, the hand of Rasulullah sallam, is the most powerful because that is the hand that taught us what giving is. The most powerful weapon of the ummah is the ability to give to the lesser. Anything that you have, any talent that you have, give it to the needy, give it to the poor. It's not just money. Anything that is, you can give. So brothers, the appeal is link yourselves to the Quran. Become messed in with the Quran. Let it burn in your soul uh, at all time. We need it. We are in dire times and uh, let us not be killed by each other and be burned by each other. Let us be burnt by the words of the Quran and create that fervor in us. And Almighty can, in second, kun fayakun, he can turn all that Islamophobia. <laughs> and if we come right, everything can disappear within seconds. Jazakumullah. <laughs> درسا يهدينا لطريق أقوم